before us, we have another para summary question. We are given six different sentences. Out of those six alternatives, we have to pick the one that best conveys the intent of the passage, the conveyance of the passage. So you have to identify the main idea that is crucial to understanding what the intent of the passage is. And another important thing is to understand the target audience and the nature of the passage and the type of the passage. Opal Creek is gone. Brighton Bush is burning. Silver Falls is vulnerable. These were some of the many distraught messages that came to me this fall. As my home state of Oregon burned. So this is most likely related to, uh, this is most likely a personal essay, but it is, uh, judging by the language, it is likely to be published in a newspaper rather than in a literary magazine. So this is most likely a personal essay from a newspaper. And uh, from what I know, although this piece of information is not necessary in order to crack it, it certainly helps save time if you know it. So this pertains to the recent spurt of wildfires that have occurred all over the world, especially in the United States. And uh, this is uh, this most likely pertains to that. So further proof that it is likely from a newspaper, since literary magazines uh, are, take a lot of time to get published, and that's why the events mentioned there are actually from a few months, uh, from several months uh, earlier. So most likely this is from a new, uh, this is from a opinion columns of a newspaper. Each proper name brought a, brought a wave of associations. How it feels to sit on the bank of the Santiam River at dusk, the smell of wet moss and red cedar bark at Jawbone Flats, the particular wonder of looking up to those stand of those stands of old growth and feeling dwarfed and outside of time. So you the one mistake that people make is focusing on these proper nouns like Opal Creek, names of places, Brighton Bush, Silver Falls. No matter how relevant they are, you only need to identify a connecting thread through them, a pattern through them that hops through them, a pattern. You don't need, you don't need all of them. Like you don't need to remember each of them individually. They're irrelevant. Factual information, such uh, factual information, like proper nouns, these are something that is not relevant, right? Like you don't need to know these names, Brighton Bush, Opal Creek, Silver Falls, Jawbone Flats. You need to know what connects these names. Like these are towns in the United States. So that is something you need to know, not these individually. Proper names have the power to cast that kind of spell, but if your body has never been in the places the names represent, they are just words on a screen. Ironic that the passage actually talks about proper names. And that's just a coincidence, let me assure you that. The loss is impossible to describe to anyone who did not know them, just as when a loved one dies. And as with any sudden death, I'm racked with feelings of guilt and regret. Why didn't I visit the last time I was in town? Why didn't I ask if I could I help? before it was too late. So let us try to quickly solve this, eliminate the options and also find if one option is correct. So the question asks of us, out of the six given, given six sentences, pick the alternative that best expresses the core intent of the passage. Is the intent of the passage to inform the readers about the cultural losses that America's wildfires and other calamities cause? See, the thing that disqualifies this is this. Although you might have deduced that this is the case, this is not explicitly mentioned in the passage. The only hint you have is here, burned. But uh, whenever, even if you use your GK to help you understand your passage, do not use your general knowledge or specific knowledge, even if you know it to be true, even if the rest of the article from where this passage is taken mentioned, might have mentioned this, which is indeed the case, but never assume that in the exam, since the passage doesn't tell you this. So this piece of information is external to the passage, even if it is subtly apparent or semi-apparent, it's not apparent directly, right? So this is obviously wrong because it gives new information, which is not mentioned in the passage. See, new information doesn't mean that that information is wrong. It can be 100% correct and even applicable and relevant, but not to the, but to the article, the source of the passage, not to the passage itself. To give an aesthetic account of the idyllic imagery of, and moreover informative that uh, it is not informative, it is more of an opinion 
So the second paragraph doesn't have a bearing here. So it's only a partial match if this is this matches. And still, this is not not written in an informative factual style. So this is of course very very wrong, as wrong as wrong gets. So that's uh, there to give an aesthetic account of the idyllic imagery of some of America's quaint little towns. Yes, quaint little towns. This is what they are. This is what I meant by identifying the pattern between these. But is the passage concerned with giving an aesthetic account? If you just look at it here, it doesn't. Uh, this one gives gives an aesthetic account, but this one doesn't. This one talks about the author's regret or how we neglect our towns, how these towns are neglected, how the author herself perhaps neglected that town. So this is more of an emotional passage, more of, more of how the towns are treated rather than what the towns are. So this talks about how rather than what, and this talks about the treatment of the towns rather than the status of the towns. So this is again most likely wrong. To enlist some of the, okay, so this aesthetic account becomes this options undoing. So marking it so you remember that. To enlist some of the vulnerable little towns of the United States that the author knows have a sense of rusticness and unique pristineness. So yeah, this is similar to that option to enlist. The intent of the, uh, this is clearly a passage expressing strong emotion. So it's, it cannot, its purpose cannot be to enlist. It's not limited. So the second paragraph alone can help you eliminate three options single-handedly. To express the author's regret at not being able to save her hometown in time and advise others against showing similar slackness in doing something about their preservation. Now you might argue that this uh, agrees with the second para, but this doesn't agree with the first para. Right. But if you look, if you look, the whole of first para leads up to this. Right. See, Opal Creek is gone, Brighton Bush is burning. All, all this all is about destruction. Right. So save her hometown. Right. So these are all small towns in America, most likely, as I can guess, as I re reckon, that were, uh, that were at a risk. Right. And she talks about all these different towns and about her town itself that uh, she was not able to save it. Right. So that is something that is clearly there in the passage. So it agrees with the second paragraph. And it is backed up by the first paragraph, which builds its premise in its very introductory lines, right? So all this leads up very beautifully to this. So we see a particular continuity there, right? And advise others against showing similar snackness. So this is most likely the intent of the passage. That's why it's written. Because she says that uh, just as when a loved one dies, we, we cannot describe what how big a loss is. So a town is something that, is very close to her that is like a loved one and now it's dead so she regrets that she was not able to save it right so that is there so d is most likely correct but let us eliminate the other options before arriving at that definitive decision that definitive conclusion to express the sentiment of how small towns are mere pinpoint names on maps so this is something that is literally there word by word match but don't be misled by it if something matches word by word doesn't mean that it is the main idea it might be a side idea that is quoted word by word but each holds a great sense of nostalgia and attachment for those who have lived there. Very true. This is this is correct. But this is not the intent of the passage. The intent. This is the this is a side idea. In fact, what I doubted, because to express the sentiment of how small towns have pinpoint map names on maps, this idea is being used to fuel another idea. This contributes to the main idea that we do not save our hometowns. Beautiful little hometowns are forever lost. And there are many towns that I've only known by their names or I've randomly come across them on maps in my journey fleetingly as, okay, I'm passing by this town or maybe this town is nearby, I never see it. And then one day it's gone, I don't realize. And an entire town's existence, a town that was small but still had maybe 10,000 or 100,000 people, it's now gone. And the only thing I know of that loss is, okay, I've heard of this name that one time in my life. So that sentiment is being evoked there. So this contributes to the main idea, but this is not the main idea. So it's wrong. Right. To assert the commonness of the fact that former residents do not care about their small hometowns until some compelling use of it comes up. Now this might seem, this might seem pertinent in the first go, but this is not, this idea is not there in the passage. That residents do not care about this until some compelling use of it comes up. This clause isn't there. Like this doesn't say that People do not care about their hometowns until, uh, you know, they're so selfish that if a use comes up, they start caring. Like that's, that thing is not directly mentioned. So again, this is not correct. 
so the right answer is d and that uh, is the that, that is the answer that we needed thank you so much hope you enjoyed the session hope to see you again thank you